I've been crucified with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I no longer live but Christ lives in me We welcome you today to our Bible study of the Apostolic Doctrine of Eschatology. The subject that we're going to be teaching on today is entitled The Seventy Weeks of Daniel, Part 1. In the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, there is a crucial prophecy that foretells when the Messiah would come and what would happen when he arrived. This prophecy is very important. It also tells us the things that Jesus the Messiah would accomplish in his time. This prophecy is referred to as the 70 weeks of Daniel. We know that a week is symbolic language for seven years by looking at the scripture in the book of Numbers chapter 14 and verse 34. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall you bear your iniquities, even forty years, and you shall know my breach of promise. This means that the seventy weeks of Daniel equal seventy times seven, or four hundred and ninety years. Daniel tells us exactly when the four hundred and ninety years began in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 25. Know therefore, and understand, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks, and threescore, and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. Notice what Daniel chapter 9 and verse 24 says. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the Most Holy. The 70 weeks of Daniel are of utmost importance because they set the timing for the last days, the end times. If we are sincere about seeking a true biblical understanding of eschatology, which is the study of the last days generation of AD 30 to AD 70, these end time verses must be honored. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2, the scripture said this, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. The last days were occurring there in the first century. Notice Acts chapter 2 and verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. This is what the Apostle Peter said on the day of Pentecost. Those were the last days. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, the Bible said this, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. 
Everywhere the apostles went, preached, and taught, they made mention of the reality of the return of Jesus in their generation, in their lifetime. There were scoffers then at that time that made fun because they, they had not seen the return of Jesus. They were mocking the apostles. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, the Bible said this, Little children, it is the last time, and as ye've heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. It was the last time that the Apostle John said was happening in the first century. And in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26, the scriptures say this, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. It was in the end of the age, not the end of the planet, it was the end of the age that Jesus appeared there. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37, about His coming again, this is what the Bible said. For yet a little while, and He that shall come, will come, and will not tarry. Oftentimes we hear today the expression, If the Lord tarries. And they put it in a futuristic setting. But this scripture was spoken back almost 2,000 years ago. And it was simply saying, that the Lord would not tarry. He did what He said He was going to do, and He did it when He said He was going to do it. Notice 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Did you notice what the scripture said? For the time is come, not the time is coming, that judgment must begin at the house of God. The judgment of God began with the only house of God there in Jerusalem, which was the temple and its destruction in A.D. 70. Philippians chapter 4 verse 5 said this, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. His arrival... His arrival was near. It was at hand. The end of everything that had to do with God's old covenant relationship with the nation of Israel was coming to a close. Notice what 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7 said. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. The end of everything that pertained to to covenant relationship was coming to an end, was coming to a close. Then and only then can these past fulfilled events that we just mentioned and completed realities be properly understood. Let's not forget that these time and eminency statements were not spoken or written to us today but were given in a first century context using normal, everyday language given to real people living then and there. These scriptures are clear, consistent, and inseparably connected to a first century audience. The 70 weeks of Daniel perfectly and harmoniously pinpointed the specific time of covenantal change. This unique period of redemptive history is the one and only true time perspective for the fulfillment of all end time Bible prophecy. For a person to honestly believe in biblical inspiration and to submit to the Word of God, there is no valid way to rationalize the demand of these verses away or to concoct some other historical framework for their fulfillment. Unfortunately, when this divine injunction is employed alongside human tradition, tradition 
usually wins. It's much easier to maintain the status quo than to face the fear of change. This is the same type of resistance and rejection that the Lord Jesus and the apostles faced. Context is the solution. Context is the most important principle of interpretation. When context is right, content is right. Context is the parts of a discourse that surround a word or passage of scripture that can throw light on its meaning and interrelated conditions in which some things exist or occur. The word chronology. Chronology is the science of measuring time in fixed periods and of dating events and epochs and arranging them in the order of their occurrence. There is no chronology in existence of the period from Cyrus to Jesus except in the Bible. In 2 Chronicles chapter 36 verses 22 and 23 the scripture said this, Now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth hath the Lord God of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? The Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. It was the giving of the commandment to rebuild that the 490 years began. Notice in the book of Ezra, chapter 1, 1 through verse 4, what the scriptures are saying. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he had charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Notice in the book of Isaiah chapter 44 verses 23, 24, and 25. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob, and glorified himself in Israel. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish. And in verse 28 of Isaiah 44, the Bible said this, That saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple Thy foundations shall be laid. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, and verse 13, the Bible said this, I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let go of my captives, not for price nor profit, 
saith the Lord of hosts. Of Cyrus, it was said in Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Cyrus is mentioned in these scriptures that we've just read, but he was spoken of 200 years before the actual event. And in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 2, we find this recorded. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. The books that were mentioned by Daniel was the book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezra, and Nehemiah. Every Bible expositor that sets aside the decree of Cyrus as the starting point of the 70 weeks to substitute some other event must not be aware of what chapters 44 and chapters 45 of Isaiah they say. It is a choice between the clear statements of the Word of God and the guesses of unbelieving historians and astronomers. Remember, the starting point of the 70 weeks prophecy was not the rebuilding of the city, but the commandment to restore and to rebuild the city. That commandment was given by Cyrus in the year 457 BC. We can read about the coming <coughs> judgment in Daniel chapter 9, verses 4, 5, and 6, and 10 and 15, and 24 through 27. Notice what the scriptures say. And I prayed unto the Lord my God, and made my confession, and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned, and have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. And neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured out upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth. For we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned as at this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision of prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, 
the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The coming judgment of God was coming against the nation of Israel. The last day's judgment of God was coming. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 45, and Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 29, and Deuteronomy 32 and 29, the scriptures say this. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. For I know that after my, de my death, ye shall utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days, because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. This bespeaks of the judgment of God that was coming against the nation of Israel. And it was coming because they broke God's covenant that He had with them at Mount Sinai. In Daniel chapter 10 and verse 14, the scripture said this, And now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. The 70 weeks of Daniel are all about the coming judgment of God in the last days against Israel. Notice Isaiah 24 and verse 5. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, and broken the everlasting covenant. In Daniel chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3, the reference is made in comparison to Matthew 13, verse 43, about the day of resurrection. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was, since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame, and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And Jesus made mention of this in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father, who hath ears to hear let him hear. This was all about resurrection time. In Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4, the scripture said this, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. To the time of the end, not the end of time. 
There is no mention of the end of time anywhere in the Bible. The only time of the end that the Bible ever referred to was the end of God's covenant relationship that He had with the nation of Israel that ended in the first century in A.D. 70. In Luke chapter 1 verse 77, the scripture said this, To give knowledge of salvation unto His people by the remission of their sins. The knowledge that was going to be increased in the first century was not the knowledge of computers and technology. It was the knowledge of knowing about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the facts about redemption. Notice 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 7. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. They were waiting for the return of Jesus in the first century A.D. 70. That knowledge that increased was the knowledge about salvation. It was to begin to come to them through the remission of their sins. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 said, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. That word remission is there. That's when knowledge began to increase. Knowledge was simply knowing the facts. Book, chapter, and verse. In Daniel chapter 12 and verse 7, the Bible said this, And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. That period of three and a half years, from 66 A.D. to 70 A.D., was when the Roman armies besieged Jerusalem. And in A.D. 70, that's when the power of the holy people that temple that they had was their connection to a sovereign God. When Jerusalem was desolated and destroyed and the temple was destroyed, the power of the Jewish people came to an end. And in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 9, the scripture said this, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. The time of the end happened in A.D. 70. In Daniel chapter 12, verses 9 and verse 13, notice the mention of the time of the end, resurrection time. At the end of days, it was the last day of the last days that resurrection occurred. But go thou thy way to the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Daniel was to be resurrected at the end of the days. On the last day, there was a great resurrection. We read about it in John chapter 6. We read about it in John chapter 11. The resurrection was to be on the last day. This concludes our Part 1 of the 70 Weeks of Daniel. We encourage you to stay tuned. Our next part of Daniel and the 70 Weeks, Part 2, will continue. And in that lesson, we will learn exactly what happened in those six points that the Scripture made reference to. If you have any question, any comment, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com or you can call us at 248-459-2130. Thank you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified with Christ.